Tax collection through earnings, investments and resource management has given Rwanda its solid infrastructure, welfare and social as well as national security, making it an attractive hub for investors and settlers alike. Now, to propagate a value system weaved around building a tax culture compliance and citizen participation, the nation celebrates Taxpayers Appreciation Day. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, we look at how the government of Rwanda funnels its national tax revenue back to its citizens and how it deals with tax fraud and evasion. My name is Tessie Carvin. The Taxpayers Appreciation Month is held annually with the aim of recognizing and appreciating compliant taxpayers as well as showcasing the impact of taxes on the country's economic development. This year marks the 19th edition of the Taxpayers Appreciation Month and is under the theme Moving Forward Together for Economic Recovery. Appreciating our taxpayer is something, as we heard, that had been is, uh, established since 19 years ago and it started from the office of the president by the president himself and it is a recognition that the contribution of Rwandan taxpayers is something that is very important for the economy. So as a way of giving them back and showing them that what they are doing in paying their taxes, in staying compliant, is appreciated by the government and is actually contributing to the economy this event has been placed, I mean, has been created. It has become an occasion for us to discuss about the, the real issues that they are facing as they're carrying out their business. It has become an occasion for them to let us know how we can improve on the services that we give them. It, and it has become an occasion to actually reconnect as human beings to some extent and help them see the human face that is behind the tax authority. As a country risen from the ashes after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, building a relationship between the citizens and the government has helped propagate a good tax culture, putting Rwanda on a growth trajectory. A good culture of paying taxes, I think this is what has really put us where we are today. Before COVID, over the years, we've registered a growth in the region of 7 to 8% every year, consistent. But even beyond the numbers in terms of growth, we've also impacted on our citizens in terms of poverty alleviation, economic development, social, inf social infrastructure in terms of the social cohesion between the government and the citizens. So in terms of impact, it is really huge. And building a grand design country just 27 years almost after against again against the Tutsi. So building a country, I think you saw the numbers that we are collecting in 1998 in terms of taxes, about 60 billion. Today, targeting 1.7 trillion in such a short space is a message that actually the private sector is part of our development agenda. And that's why as we celebrate the Taxpayer Celebration Month, it's an opportunity again to say, okay, thank you very much for what you have been doing for, for the past. Can we also hear from you what is it that we can do together to enhance and improve what we are, the services we are offering you? What process can we change for business to grow? So uh, th th that's what we are trying really to achieve. Despite the pandemic disruptions, Rwanda Revenue Authority exceeded the revenue collection target for the 2020-2021 fiscal year by over 60.1 billion Rwandan francs. The total tax and non-tax revenue collections amounted to 1,654.5 billion Rwandan francs against a target of 1,594.3 billion Rwandan francs, representing a 9.4% increase. Last year, we were able to perform to the level of 103.4 percent. We surpassed by a nominal value of 60.1 billion uh, Rwandan francs, the target that we were given. But when we started this year, 
we started uh, in, Ju in July with a lockdown, which was totally unexpected and which was not taken into account when the target was set uh, in the Ministry of Finance uh, sometimes in April, last, uh, in April this year. So as a consequence, the first quarter we did not perform um, as we would have wished. We actually had a, a, a result of 99.1% in terms of uh, approaching the targets. Uh, the uh, and this was caused, as I said, first of all by the lockdown. Secondly, we also observed that even the importations, the effect of the COVID, not only in our country, but also in other countries, has led uh, economic activities to slow down a little bit and importations have gone uh, lower. When you go into the details of our performance, um, uh, department by department, you'll see that we have two um, departments that are operational. We have the domestic taxes, the domestic revenue mobilization department, and we have the customs department. It's more on the customs side that we have observed a big dip because of the lowering of the level of importations. When we come to the domestic tax side, we are actually exceeded. We actually exceeded. So the, I would say that the effect of COVID is really at the base of our, not poor, but less than optimal um, uh, performance in the first quarter of this financial year. The COVID-19 pandemic caused disruption to businesses, jobs, as well as household livelihoods, resulting in increased poverty, with the poorest and vulnerable suffering the most. Now, the Rwandan government had to put in place measures to cushion its citizens and aid recovery. Well, I think we had a couple of measures that we put in place, be it fiscal, policy related, and also monetary policy related, and all targeting the private sector. For example, uh, we, 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 we had to create an economic recovery fund which would speak to soften the burden in terms of debt levels. We had a moratorium on paying bank loan payments through the central bank. We also put measures like immediately trying to see how can we really fund all the money, pay the, tax, pay the business community in time to speak to their cash flow requirements but also do VAT refund, whatever all them we paid. So those are the measures that we put in place to say, yes, they, we are in shock <laughs> as a government and also the private sector, but we are in this together. And what can we do for us really to reasonably mitigate the damage? But also as you mitigate the damage, you do that with a forward-looking lens to say, how we, shall we recover? And that's why now we're getting into another economic recovery fund that touches investment to say, okay, how can you come and get money at a lower interest rate and a longer tenor, and then you support us for economic recovery. Then you set up a, a build and manufacture to recover fund policy where you get incentives on taxes if you have an investment project that can be completed within two years. So it's a lot, but we continue as a change it according to the dynamics and what changes we are facing. Some taxpayers are still smarting from having to meet their tax obligations, but as the chairman of Rwanda's private sector federation says, the taxman has put in place systems that have made it easy for taxpayers to comply. There have been a lot of improvement in terms of uh, uh, communication systems and so on. I would say that the uh, Taxpayers spend more time working than paying tax or chewing in the tax authority building to pay tax. There are systems which are facilitated by online uh, payment, declaration, and so on. Number two, uh, tax revenue authority try to promote and appreciate and support the compliant taxpayers, which encourages the taxpayers to pay tax on time. Thirdly, is that uh, every other year there's a change uh, in terms of partnership, the, the taxpayers and the Rwanda Revenue Authority. This makes it easy and uh, clears the mind uh, sets of taxpayers. So in that way, progressively, the compliance uh, grows in the business, in the business community.
Despite these efforts to ease and compliance, tax evasion is the most prevalent financial crime in Rwanda. And according to a report by the Financial Intelligence Center, over 20 billion Rwandan francs was lost to tax evasion over the last five years. Rwanda Revenue Authority has, however, come up with ways to curb this vice. We have um, a revenue investigation and enforcement department, enforcement department which is, uh, has inside itself a revenue protection unit um, in partnership with uh, the national police. We work together to ensure that smugglers are stopped as soon as possible. So uh, you might have seen it in many newspapers, how many times bales of clothes have been uh, caught, uh, illegal product imported from countries uh, which have entered through our porous border. Uh, it's totally, it's not always possible to control all the borders, so sometimes they would use an unknown entry points and they would try to smuggle into the country products uh, that are taken from neighboring countries. So this is also one way we are trying to reduce uh, fraud and, 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 and I mean, all, all, and evasions you know, of taxes. Taxation not only pays for public goods and services, it is also a key ingredient in the social contract between citizens and the economy. How taxes are raised and spent can determine a government's legitimacy. Now, Rwanda's good tax culture is evident that the citizens not only see but also enjoy the benefits of their taxes. That's a wrap for today's edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. Until next time, I'm Tessie Carvin.